My name is Ian Milligan, and I'm with the Archives Unleashed team. What I want to do in the next few minutes is give you a tour of the Archives Unleashed cloud. Now, the Archives Unleashed cloud is part of the Archives Unleashed project, which has as its goal the aim to make petabytes of historical internet content accessible to scholars and others interested in researching the recent past. We develop web archive search and data analysis tools to enable scholars, researchers, librarians, archivists, and others the ability to access, share, and investigate recent history since the early days of the World Wide Web. Now, a central part of this is the Archives Unleashed cloud. And so in the next minute or so, I'd like to give you a quick guided tour of what you can do with the cloud right now. Now, when you come to the Archives Unleashed cloud, the first thing you're going to want to do is log in to the service. I'm going to switch windows over to a new fresh window, one that hasn't used the Archives Unleashed cloud before. And you'll see in the upper right, we have two options. We can log in with our Twitter account, or we can log in with our GitHub account. If you don't have Twitter, you don't have GitHub, don't worry, you can just go to twitter.com or github.com, create a new account and come back and use our service. So let's log in with our Twitter account. And you'll see here, this is a page from Twitter, and it's asking if you authorize the Archives Unleashed Cloud to use your account. And if you do, you'll see that we get the power to read tweets from your timeline and see who you follow. Now, we don't care what you're tweeting about. We don't care who you're following. That's really just there because that's the lowest level of permission that we can get from Twitter. So let's log into an account. I'm going to log in to my University of Waterloo institutional Twitter account. And the reason I did this is because nobody has actually used this account before. And so you'll see we're the 57th user to use the Archives Unleashed Cloud. So when you come to the Archives Unleashed Cloud and you're a new user, this is what you're going to see. A bird, an auk, is your gravatar. You don't really have a face there. And you don't have any collections to sync. And so you'll see here a blue button that says Enter Credentials. So let's click on that right now. And let's start providing some information. So I'm going to provide my email i2milligan at uwaterloo.ca. I'm going to provide my name. That email is useful because we're going to send you notices to that when collections are done, which you'll consent to in a second. It's also useful if you have a Gravatar account. You don't have to see that big ugly bird. You can see your own face. Institution. I, of course, work at the University of Waterloo. And I'm going to consent to the Archives and Leash team sending occasional emails to me about things that are happening on this site and my collections as well as for other matters such as user feedback. And now I'm going to provide archive it user account information. I'm going to log in in this case as Dalhousie University. Um, I'm going to use a shared login that we have from our, um, our my colleague and co-investigator Nick Rouet, and then I'll provide a password as well. So this is an archive it credential, the username and password that we have from archive it. And then I press update. And we can see a few things have changed. Our account is now syncing. An email will be sent to i2milligan at uwaterloo.ca once it is complete. We now see my face. And in the background, we're using an API to go to the Internet Archive and see what exactly the collections are that are available for us to analyze. And so at this point, I'm going to close this private window and let's continue as my original user. So here we are logged back in as me. And we're logged in as a Dalhousie University user. And here we can see several different collections that we have accessible um, to analyze. So let's start off by looking at a collection that we haven't actually analyzed yet. So in this case, I'm going to go to um, the legalization of cannabis in Nova Scotia. We can see at a glance that's got three files. That means there are three work files, or in some cases for very early collections, ARC files. And that in total, the collection is 1.71 gigs. So we'll see we go to this collection. Because we actually haven't downloaded the works, all we can do is click Analyze Collection. When I click this button, what it will do is download the works, and then it will process them to produce some derivative files that you can work with. So let's click Analyze Collection, and we'll see a little warning message pops up. 
Do we really want to download and analyze 1.71 gigs? Downloading large collections can take a long time depending on our connection to the Internet Archive and the other number of other users who are currently using the service. We ask for your patience. We're actually pretty quick on our downloads, but imagine everybody who watched this video immediately ran to cloud.archivesunleashed.org and you all downloaded a few terabytes each. Then we'd sort of operate on a queuing system and you'd have to patiently wait until other collections ahead of you were downloaded. But that sounds reasonable, so I'm going to press OK. And we can see here that our collection is downloading, and an email will be sent to i2milligan at uwaterloo.ca once it is complete. That's why we ask for your email address. It might take a while. In the case of 1.7 gigs, it should be downloaded very shortly. Say you're downloading 4 terabytes. You don't want to have to keep refreshing the site. Just wait until you get an email uh, that will tell you what you can do. So while the downloads, let's go look at a collection that we've already synced. So I'm going to go to Artist Run Centers in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And so this is what happens after you get an email saying that your collection is done. You go to the website, um, we'll provide a link or you can go to it manually, and then you can see some of the basics of what's in that Archivate collection. The first thing you'll see here is a hyperlink diagram. And so these are all of the sites that were crawled and all of the domains that they link to. So if we look in here, we can see a few different websites, kyber.ca, cfat.ca, wordpress.org, hif.ca. And interesting things like what are sites that, you know, these are the three main seeds, what are the sites that they all commonly link to? Well, canadahelps.org, a common media organization or funding agency, perhaps. Vimeo.com, they host their videos there. Or, of course, the omnipresent Twitter. Instagram, social media sites, etc. Sometimes it's usable out of the box. Sometimes maybe you want to see things a little bit easier. And so you can click to increase the node size. You can zoom in. You can zoom out. You can refresh. You can get hopelessly lost and press the refresh button. And you can even make it a full screen view if, say, for example, it's not quite legible enough. That's a good surface level idea of what might be in this collection. What, what's the basic shape of it? And now we can scroll down and we can see what actually was collected. Kyber.ca, cfat.ca, ilevel.art, the three main nodes, and we can see the things that they have in common, and some other websites that were collected. The final thing that stands out are these derivative files. You could download a file called Gephi, a file called raw network, a file called domains, or a file called full text. Now, these are the centerpiece of the Archives Unleashed Cloud, and so we've provided a lot of information about how you can actually use these files. So now let's talk a little bit about those derivative files. Just before I load up the instruction guide, I'll just show another box that just appeared. Um, about two minutes after we provided our Archive It collection information for that Waterloo History user, we got an email. Here you can see it, our nice logo. But more importantly, your Archives Unleashed Cloud collections are now set up and are available here. Thanks for using it. Have a great day. You'd be actually at the stage where I was before. So that's just a useful thing. And, and again, that's why we ask for your email address. So let's take a look at these derivatives. So first of all, you can just click on them and download them. For example, you could click on the full text file. And you'll see here, the full text file of that Archive It collection is downloaded and is actually finished, it's about 25 megabytes of full text, and you can look at it here. Now this is a pretty small Archive It collection, and you can pretty quickly see that's a lot of text. This is all the text that appears on all of the sites within that collection. You're probably not going to sit down, you know, in a nice easy chair and read that quite casually. We also have information on the domains. If, say for example, um, you're really curious about what was collected, you can see a list here. And then we have network files, which you can load up into a program like Gephi. So let me download the Gephi file. I'm going to load up the Gephi program, which is an open source uh, network visualization program. And let me just um, bring that up on the screen right now. And so this file 
directly loads up into Gephi. We provide links to it. And then you can actually see that's similar to this. The difference is you can now work with it interactively and you can begin to try different layouts. And here I'll just make the text different sizes based on based on the size of this. You know, the bigger the, the more links that are coming in and out, the bigger the circle, the bigger the label. And then we can begin to sort of make these beautiful network diagrams to figure out what exactly might be going on within a collection. Now in the last second, I moved pretty quickly. I've done this very, very hastily. And so we know that not everybody uses programs like Gephi all the time. And so we have a set of learning guides for people to use. And so you can get to that a few different ways. You'll see below the file so you can find information about how to use these files here. Or you can also click on our hamburger in the upper right corner and you can click on using derivatives there. And you'll see here what we have is a set of learning guides that teach you how to use those files. We teach you how to use Gephi to lay out the diagrams as you saw there. We teach you how to use things like Python's natural language toolkit um, or a program called AntConf to analyze all of that full text. And we teach you how to work with networks more generally. And so let me just open up a few of these in some new tabs. So we have here Gephi. When using the web as a historical source, the ability to see the way that websites link to each other can be invaluable. However, it's also daunting, as you can imagine from that demo you just saw. So we can look at how to network graph them. Here we've got a three set of how to work with the plain text. How do you filter them? Or how do you use off-the-shelf software to work with text at scale? And we also provide other resources. And finally, how to use the domains. Let me give you a quick rundown of what these things kinds of show. So in this case, most of these are written by Sarah McTavish, who's a PhD candidate at the University of Waterloo. And we say, hey, if you click on that Gephi button, how do you use it? So here's where you get Gephi. Here's how to load the data. Here's what it might look like when you started. See, that's a far more complicated network than the one we were working with. Here's the statistics. And then how can you make it usable to find information? Um, in this case, say clusters of media that are talking about a certain information. Here we talk about how to use simple command line tools to create derivative files that are even smaller than the ones you get. How to use a program called AntConc, which is a beautifully interactive program to look at what people are talking about in large bodies of text. And then what to make sense of domains. What can we actually learn about that table at the bottom? So let me go back to that collection page and then we can talk a little bit about next steps that we might have. I hope you've enjoyed your tour of the Archives Unleashed Cloud so far. What's next for us? Well, we're continuing to work on documentation, making documentation easier to use, more straightforward, so that you can use the derivative files and you can understand what our project's all about as easily as possible. providing about information, trying to really make the case for why this sort of research and work is really, really important. Down the road, we'd like to, because we use the Basapi API, open things up so that other platforms beyond Archive.it can use the Archives Unleashed Cloud. And we're thinking about how to make sure it's sustainable after our funding from the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation uh, runs out in 2020. We're all really, really hopeful on this, and if you have any questions or you'd like to follow along, please do visit us at our website at archivesunleashed.org. There we've got links that you can find our Slack channel, you can find our mailing list, you can find information about related projects such as our toolkit, the Archives Unleashed toolkit, or the set of datathons that we run. Uh, our next one's in Vancouver in November, and we'll have one hopefully in Washington, D.C. in March of 2019. So in any case, thank you so much for following along with the tour. And uh, if you have any questions, please drop us a line. We'd love to unleash archives with all of you. Thank you.